Time now for my daily interview series, Money Talks. And it's a pleasure to welcome back Sim Hall. He's Managing Director of Popular Select, which offers tailored recruitment solutions to the oil, energy, petrochemical, infrastructure, transport, manufacturing, biotech sectors right across the piece. Previously an engineer in the army, Sim now specialises in top-level candidates, hiring them worldwide, and Populous operates across the world, from the US to France to Papua New Guinea, no less. And here he is in the studio, Sim Hall of Populous, my latest guest on Money Talks. Sim, great to have you with us in the studio. Thank you, Lee. We want to talk to you anyway about global economic trends and recruitment yeah. and so on, because that's really what you specialise in. But we decided to bring you in today because you are proudly from Teesside. You hail from the northeast of England and we're talking about levelling up. So what's your sense, if I may, on where levelling up is right now? Is it just a slogan? Is it just a slogan? Well, particularly for the sectors that I'm involved with, um, Tees Valley, from a, from, from a local point of view, speaking about that, which uh, I can do, uh, we've done quite well out of it. Yeah. And I think, essentially, that's because of the, 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 we've got a few things right. Key part of that is the leadership that's required. And um, Ben Houchard has done a sterling job making sure that... Tory Mayor for Tees Valley, who's yeah. made inroads into the traditional Labour vote. Absolutely. You've had the Tories winning Hartlepool as well. So it's a bit of a kind of poster child of what the Tories want to do with levelling up. So the yeah. North East, you know, with all respect that's been one of the poorer regions of the UK in our yeah. lifetimes, mm -hmm. has been getting a bit more cash. But it's about more than cash, isn't it? You just, we just heard from John Elliott, a, yeah. a manufacturing legend from your part of the world, Absolutely. and he's saying, just get out of the way, get out of the way. We don't need a new station at Darlington. I think there's an element of that, and I wouldn't like to disagree with John for being who he is, but um, we do need the government. We do need that, that, that input. You know, we've seen a huge amount of one of the areas that we've been really good at. I said we mentioned a few things that we've got right. One of the things we have got right is investing in um, catapults for new innovation in sustainable technology, in, in, in that green tech, and in also... They're like sort of fast-moving funding packages Absolutely. and to get behind a project. Well, They're called uh, catapults, right? Well, capital. Well, more than that, it's uh, an organisation, a company called CPI, that we've, we've got in the North East, and they've been put in to commercialise new ideas, new technologies coming from industry. And they've done that fantastically well from a bio point of view. They're now doing it in manufacturing and they're also doing it in the, in the uh, life sciences sector. Aren't you just a little bit disappointed? I know you and your company, you, you, you work across the world. You, yep. You're a really successful guy. You know, chapeau to you. But I know you really care about the North East. Mm. Where are the free ports? Where are the enterprise zones? Where are the post-Brexit um, policies that yep. we were meant to get. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've had a pandemic. Yes, there's a war in Europe. Yeah, but yep. shouldn't the government be getting on with it? Yep, and, and I'm, I'm pleased to say T-Sport is a free port. You know, they've delivered on that. So th there's a lot more they need to do. You know, we do have a lot of things right, and I think partly is because T-Side, we've been historically really good at adapting and applying ourselves to what's required. And, uh, and what needs to be done, in my, my reviews, is to further investment in those catapults, mm. further looks at different areas that are going to improve our uh, productivity and our sustainability, but also this continued investment where we need the input from government to make these areas more metropolitan to attract people and providing companies. some infrastructure Absolutely. and public sector money and then private yeah. sector money will be attracted by that clustering effect and, and people. Yeah. You know, the, some of the figures that you're talking about and we've seen uh, from the ONS that are really important, they give a snapshot. Yeah. It's not giving the full picture. Yeah. Um, and looking at the uh, unemployment rates, they're still far higher in, in the North East than the rest of the country. And in some poor parts of the country, unfortunately, longevity is lower. Absolutely. Which is obviously yeah. a huge yeah. Yeah. tragedy. I couldn't have you here, Sim, without asking you about people. People are your business training. You obviously have made a business at the high end of the hiring scale, if you like. But what's your general view on skills? We hear a lot of chest beating. We see endless pencil sucking among the policy making classes. We haven't got enough apprenticeships. We haven't got enough trained people. Some of the younger people are a bit work shy. Do you recognise any of those trends? Would you counter those impressions? 
Uh, I do recognise them. You know, we, we've uh, drastically underinvested in, in those and now one of the effects that we're seeing from what's been going on recently is the older workforce have made the decision to retire and that, that's, that's created this huge exodus of people out of the market. It's not just a local, uh, a, a, a national problem. This is international really? that we're seeing. Absolutely. Well, you would know. You would know. We, 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 we're working with, for instance, um, some life science businesses in Boston, Massachusetts. Wow. And they're struggling exactly the same. Boston, the, 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 the city of, yep. of Harvard, MIT, MIT. The, yep. the, the technological you know, centre of the world in many ways. They're, they're desperate for people at, 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 at a higher level. I mean, a lot of people just haven't gone back to work after the pandemic, right? Exactly. They've, they've, exactly. They've, they've had a bit of time off and thought, hang about, I've got a few quid in the bank. And also, people are choosing to where they want to work, where they want to live and, and work from. And again, this comes back to being able to attract these people back to our area, this dis diaspora that's disappeared either at university level when they've mm. graduated or before that, and they've gone, they've gone to different places. Mm. We need to make sure that it's an attractive place to come, live, train, pass on those skills. Well, if there's some decent jobs, you know, you're, 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 with all respect, your top most talented youngsters, they might go away for a bit, might go to uni, might go somewhere else. They can buy a house in the North East a lot easier than they can buy a house in Surrey. Maybe that's what will be what will happen. Uh, well, absolutely. It's what I did. Yeah. You know, um, I, I was abroad, spending a long, lot of my time abroad, but I wanted to come back to the North East for my family for a better work-life balance, and I've achieved it. Well, we're glad you did, and we're glad you're here in the studio on The Money, my latest Money Talks guest today, Sim Hall of Popular Select. Thank you, Liam. Very nice to talk to you. Thank you.